Melissa's on the line in Oakland, California. Melissa, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hi, Ken. Thank How you for you? taking the call. Well, thank you for calling. What's <laughs> yeah, up? Yeah. Um, well, so um, I I love your segment on uh, No Job is Secure because that's exactly what happened to me. Um, so I'm a librarian, and um, I worked real hard from 2011 to 2015 to get my graduate degree and student loan debt and all that stuff. And um, I've also been working at a higher ed university um, for about 20 plus years, 15 of which were in admin. And I was really tired of admin, so I went back to grad school to get you know some other type of degree and I landed a dream job. It was great. I worked in an archive and um, I really enjoyed everything I was doing. There was an admin component, but mostly my um, supervisor was really encouraging for me to learn archival skills and develop my librarianship. Um, but what happened was in um, about six years into the role, we hired some new employees and one of them I have known since the time I started working there, she knew me. We always had a good rep, you know, rapport. And the other two were really new to me, one of which um, I later came to find out was kind of a troublemaker. And um, my supervisor wasn't around very much, and they were coming to me with questions because I was the admin person, and they were, I was getting all this frustration that they were having. At the same time, I was feeling really stressed about some personal issues that were going on. So I just said, you know what, I'm going to go to my boss's supervisor and say what's going on, and um, you know, hopefully there will be some resolution. Well, she asked for certain names of who was telling me what, so I did tell them. And one of them, the person that was kind of the problem employee, was coming to me with concerns about the other person who I know um, possibly flirting. There was a question of flirtation with a supervisor. Between who? Between the person that I know and my super and my former supervisor. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So I wanted to nip that in the bud. So when I was talking to his supervisor, my boss's supervisor, um, that was one of the things I shared. Well, it came around, um, his supervisor talked to him and then it came around that I was the one that started the rumor to the point where I had gotten a harassment charge brought against me. And I had to go to the ombudsperson, uh, had to talk with an independent investigator. This has never happened to me before. And um, it finally came back as, you know, there was no harassment. It was a case of gossip. I got the resources for gossip and let it all go. So I was thinking, okay, you know, there's some feelings hurt, but I'm going to try and repair it. I apologize. Um, And unbeknownst to me, I was... All of a sudden, I got this email that said, hey, we're going to welcome you into this other role as a cataloger, which is, you know, librarian work as well. So I was shocked, but I said, well, okay, you know, that sounds good. And then later, the department that I was working, the the larger department, they reneged on that. And they put me into an admin role. Higher pay, much better title, but... I, I worked really hard in grad school to get out of okay. that work. All right. So I've got I've only yeah. got now about five minutes with you. So okay. what's okay. the question and how can I help? Okay. So the two questions, two parts. One is how do I get over being ostracized and getting over my anger? Because I, I really don't even want to interact with a lot of people now, which is totally not my character. And how do I encourage myself to go into looking for archival work, um, even though I don't have all the experience that other people do, and um, or do I just stick out this admin work? I have five years to, reti- to retirement, <laughs> no. and I have a pension. So. Okay, all right, so let's take the first question. How do you get over okay. the, um yeah. You're going to have to take some personal responsibility on this. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to say that you gossiped because yeah. the technical definition of gossip um, is you heard from one coworker about this flirtation, and then you would have told five or seven other coworkers. You technically yeah. went to leadership with this, yeah, based on what you told me. Mm-hmm. However, 
I don't know how much facts you had. And I'm not sure it's your responsibility to go above mm -hmm. your leader's head on this. Yeah. If it's sexual harassment and it's harmful and we have clear-cut evidence, yeah, I think you blow the whistle. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to try this. It, you know, it's not like I'm Judge Ken all of a sudden. <laughs> but I do feel, since you asked me, how do I get over it? I, I think you have to take some responsibility to go, did I know that I knew that I knew that I knew? Was I absolutely certain that there was flirtation was going on? Mm -hmm. And while it may mm -hmm. be inappropriate for a married person to be flirting with someone else, and I think it is, is that your whistle to blow? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because it blew up in your face. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Because it was your right. word. It was someone else's word that became your word against your supervisor's word. Exactly. Yeah. And yep. the supervisors denied it. And then his supervisors believed it. And then you've been reassigned. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to learn a lesson here and go, there are times in life where I need to stand and fight. And there are other times where it's not my business and I need to, to get over it. So I think you need yeah. to, to learn from this. Yeah. I'm not saying you did anything wrong. I'm saying I don't know that you should have blown the whistle in this case unless you absolutely knew for a fact. Because even the way you said it to me, you went, and I had to nip that in the bud. Well, it's not your position to nip that in the bud. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yep. All right. Yep. So I think there's a learn. So we got to learn from our from our past mistakes. I think it's just a mistake. I think it was a yep. professional misjudgment on your part. No big deal. Let's get over it. So get over yep. it. I'm telling you. Yep. You didn't do anything wrong. But it wasn't a great move. Yeah. So now it's 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 impacted you. So yeah. so now we have to ask, based on this, how possible is it for me to actually get into the archiving work at this particular place? Because now I've I've created some tension, and it feels yeah. like on the surface that you aren't going to get that opportunity. Is that fair? Yes. All right, yeah. so now I'm looking somewhere else. I'm not sticking it out for five years. I would stay there until you found an archiving job, and if you can't get the experience to do the archiving job, well, now you're between a rock and a hard place. But yeah. I would look outwardly and go, can I do more archiving work, or more importantly, can I go back and do the type of work that I was doing for another library or another institution? Because it was your dream job. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. you know what the dream job is. I've not yeah. spent any time walking through why it's a dream job because you don't need me to do that. You can describe <laughs> it to me and anybody else on paper and verbally why it was a dream job. Let's go see if we can find that somewhere else, but stay put right now because you need the finances. And I would yeah. do your best to eat humble pie every day you walk in. Humble pie, right? <laughs> I mean that. That's true. I mean, yeah, I'm just no, picturing, yeah, like yeah. I'm in the car and I get out one of those little triangle little things that my wife always cuts the pie with and I'm getting me a <laughs> scoop of humble pie and I'm eating it on the way in. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the best you can do to try to revive the situation. You've apologized, but that yeah. doesn't mean you've been forgiven, and it doesn't mean that you won't be limited. And so that's your reality. So I'd be looking for something somewhere else that is the dream job because you know what it looks like. You know how to find it. So go look for it. Until then, stay put and learn from this. Listen, folks, our morals aren't everybody else's morals. We still got to live. <laughs>